Hello, thank you for joining us. My name is Michelle Allen. I'm the Southern Region Deputy Director at Food and Water Watch. And uh, in this session, we are talking about the Food and Water Volunteer Network and how we are working to build volunteer leaders and political power. So I'm joined uh, in this session by Brooke Errett, senior organizer based in Florida, uh, as well as Sarah Edwards, campaign lead volunteer uh, with the Food and Water Team Tampa. So in the next uh, 15 minutes, we are gonna discuss what the Food and Water Volunteer Network is. We'll hear from Brooke and Sarah about their work to stop climate catastrophe in Tampa, Florida. Um, and then we'll wrap up by talking about what's next for the Volunteer Network and how you can plug in. So let's kick it off with an overview of the Food and Water Volunteer Network. The Volunteer Network is an intentional volunteer leadership development program. Volunteers have always played a major role in our work at Food and Water Watch. There's just so much work that needs to be done to safeguard healthy food, clean water, and a livable climate. And really since our beginnings, volunteers have worked hand in hand with staff to advance that mission. We cannot do it without them. I just want to say thank you so much to all of our amazing volunteers. So, but the Food and Water Volunteer Network aims to build on the work that we're already doing with our volunteers and add more opportunities to engage with us by creating leadership opportunities. And we hope that by creating more of these opportunities, volunteers that want to step into these leadership roles uh, and get more deeply involved in the work have that opportunity to do so. So the volunteer network includes both location-based teams as well as opportunities like our calling, texting, and climate liaison teams where you can join no matter where you are across the country and volunteer with us. So I'm gonna go into a little bit of each of these. So the calling and texting teams support our campaigns by calling and texting fellow Food and Water Watch supporters. Uh, to ask them to take action, like calling their representative or signing a petition. This team is really critical because they help reach out to thousands of action takers every week. The Climate Liaison Team is made up of volunteer grassroots lobbyists across the country. Climate liaisons are working to educate the staff and their Congress members' office on the crucial legislation that we need to stave off climate catastrophe. Uh, and in addition to these national teams, like I also mentioned, we've got location-based teams in several states. Right now, those teams are in Florida, Iowa, New York, California, and Oregon. Soon, we are going to be expanding into more communities. And now volunteers uh, and those teams are working in their own communities to pass policies at the local, state, and federal levels to safeguard healthy food, clean water, and a livable climate. So next we're gonna dive a bit into the leadership opportunities in the network. So to get volunteers ready to take on a leadership role, we provide the training and support that's needed to gain those skills uh, and the knowledge to take these roles on. So first we host network-wide volunteer meetings where we discuss our critical campaigns and policies so that volunteers have the information that they need to talk about the solutions, the policy solutions to protecting our food, water, and climate. Um, uh, also skill trainings. Skill trainings are a key piece of leadership development. Organizers regularly host trainings on core organizing skills like writing letters to the editor, how to phone bank, and how to recruit new volunteers. Food and Water Watch organizers have also now trained over 100 volunteers on strategic organizing in our two-day intensive training on how to plan and implement strategic organizing campaigns. Um, now, the volunteer liaison role that I mentioned earlier is one of those leadership positions. Liaisons, like I said, are grassroots lobbyists. They're working to build a relationship with the staff and their Congress member's office and educate them on key climate policies like ending fossil fuel subsidies. 
So this position is really crucial right now because we are running out of time to enact bold climate policies. And by training up grassroots lobbyists, we are able to educate and pressure many more Congress members than we're able to with just our staff alone. Um, and within these geographic based teams, we have multiple leadership roles uh, that you see on the screen here. So I'm just going to talk through each of those really briefly and what those leaders do. So first are campaign leads. Uh, these leaders work directly with organizers to develop strategic campaign plans. Uh, they represent us at meetings and events and lobby elected officials. Uh, engagement leads work with organizers to conduct outreach to fellow Food and Water Watch, Food and Water Watch supporters through phone calls, texting, uh, and attending town halls and events. Media leads, they work to monitor local news coverage, they recruit others to write letters to the editor, they reach out to reporters, and they work to get our issues covered in the news. Recruitment lead works to bring in new food and, water water, food and Water Watch supporters by speaking at community events, they table, uh, and they meet with new potential volunteers to recruit them in to join our team. Um, and keep in mind, if a volunteer leadership role isn't right for you, that's okay. We have a lot of these opportunities to step into leadership roles, um, but truly we need volunteers that can take on a variety of roles. So um, if a leadership opportunity isn't right for you, that's okay. We need folks at, at every level. So next, we're going to hear from Food and Water Watch senior organizer, Brooke Arrett, who's based in Florida, and volunteer leader, Sarah Edwards, who is the campaign lead in Tampa. Brooke and Sarah are going to talk a little bit about the work they're doing to get U.S. Representative Kathy Castor to fight for bold climate policies uh, and how the volunteer network is helping to shape that work. So first, Brooke and Sarah, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, uh, first, you know, I would love for you just to speak a little bit to the campaign that you both are working on to get Representative Castor uh, to fight for those bold climate policies that we need, like stopping federal fossil fuel subsidies. Can you speak to some of the tactics that you've been organizing on this campaign? Yeah, sure. Um so right now, um, we have a very short time frame to get um, Representative Kathy Castor to, uh, su to support ending fossil fuel subsidies in all forms. And so some of the stuff that we're doing is uh, building an escalation plan where we're starting by getting grassroots drumbeat into her office through making calls. Um, then we're also organizing with allies to um, submit an organizational sign-on letter asking her to support ending fossil fuel subsidies. And we're going to deliver that to her office with a big pair of scissors asking her to cut up the check to the fossil fuel industry and inviting her to be the champion on this. And we're partnering with the Sunrise Movement and other allies for a big youth rally. Um, at the end of the month, where hopefully U.S. Representative Kathy Castor will show up, cut up the check to the fossil fuel industry, and call on leadership to support ending fossil fuel subsidies. And um, you know, this is not the beginning of the tactics that we've been doing around this campaign. In fact, at the beginning of the summer, Sarah put together an amazing action. Would you like to talk about that, Sarah? Sure. Thanks, Brooke and Michelle. Um, so this was uh, really fun for me. It was actually my my very first um, action like this with food and water. Uh, and um, what we did, basically, we got a bunch of petition signed. So there was a lot of work behind the scenes to get people to sign the petition. Uh, and then we um, got a group of us to go down and we had a meeting set with one of Castor's staff. Um, and we delivered several boxes full of um, petitions. So it was a really fun um, photo opportunity. Also, we ended up having a really great meeting with that member of staff to really drive home the importance of cutting out subsidies and why we were so passionate about it. We were able to each share our own climate stories and why we were doing this work, um, which I think was really powerful for him to hear. 
and um, it was it was a lot of fun. Um, we we also um, took down some signage, um, some food and water signage, of course, um, and had a, a kind of giant check asking um, Castor to void the check. Um, so you know, definitely some use of of some fun props, and um, was really supported by some of our allies. We had. Uh, in fact, I, I was the, the, the kind of main person from Food and Water. We had a, a, a bunch of other people from um, some partner organizations with us as well. So it was really nice because it really was a great example of us showing our collective power uh, with this representative and um, the number of different organizations we had signing the petition was really cool too. I do want to add to that. Sarah did this action only two weeks after becoming the campaign lead. Uh, she just went all in. It was absolutely amazing. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you so much again, Brooke and Sarah, for all of your uh, work on this really important campaign. Um, so next, Sarah, actually, I'm going to uh, ask you to speak a little bit more uh, to your role as the campaign lead in Tampa. And if you could also speak to the, the training that you've received to help uh, prepare for this role. Sure. Um, so as Brooke mentioned, um, I'm still relatively new in post. Um, but we've accomplished a lot in a short amount of time. Um, the petition drop was, was, as I said, one of the first things, um, but we've also been working locally with our city council um, to move to 100% renewable energy. So that was another really, really big, exciting piece. Uh, and we've, we've been kind of shimming a little bit, you know, with some local and, and national stuff, which has been, been fun. Um, and I think shows the flexibility of our muscles to be able to kind of you know, do a couple things at once. Um, and um, the training's been great. Um, I definitely felt very supported through that. I think maybe the first training um, was a, a kind of overview of the issues. Um, I have some background in environmental work, but um, not as much as, as you guys. So it was really reassuring for me to have that deep dive into the issues and some of the policy, policy solutions that food and water supports particularly and why. So I think understanding that why is really critical to be able to explain it to other people. Um, we had a couple of very action-oriented um, trainings on bird dogging. Um, which I haven't been able to put into practice yet because of COVID, but I'm looking forward to um, to doing that. Brooke had an amazing kind of bird dogging the other day uh, that that she accomplished, and I I look forward to being able to do that. Um, but we did a letter to the editor writing workshop, and I think one of my favorite things is you literally write the letter on the workshop. So um, for those of us, all of us are very busy. And I think it's amazing to be able to do these trainings and you immediately um, have a product in your hand that you can go and do something um, positive with. Uh, and then as you guys have mentioned, the strategic organizing workshop was really incredible. Um, for me, I've worked in policy space and other arenas before um, in different roles, but this was really helpful um, to frame up the types of things we need to be thinking about um, and just kind of getting straight in my head. So I'm, I'm, I'm a better partner with our allies in terms of what we mean by, you know, our target and our tactics and, you know, different things that we're doing throughout the campaign. Um, so it really gives a, a great overview of how to, um, where the different inputs come, come in and what needs to be done. Um, so yeah, those are probably my favorite trainings. Um, we also did one on relation, relational organizing, which was really cool. And again, very action oriented. I would like to say about these trainings, Sarah. Um, so the letter to the editor um, workshop that she was talking about was only the first month that Team Tampa had started up. And it was apparent from the beginning that Sarah was a leader um, in, in the strategic organizing training too. I mean, she's always reached out to her team members and helped everybody to get there. So thanks Sarah for just leading from the first meeting. <laughs> That's great. So my last question for, for both of you, um, you know, these days, most of our meetings and our events uh, like this conference are virtual because we need to keep people safe. So can you speak a bit to how the volunteer team in Tampa uh, has been able to build a sense of community, uh, even in this virtual setting? Well, from an organizer's point of view, this was something completely new. Usually starting new volunteer efforts happens in person, um, not through a virtual Zoom call, but we launched Team Tampa last July in 2020 in the midst of a worldwide pandemic. 
Uh, but we were able to really connect a wonderful group of people together. And I have to say my favorite part about the team is that we've all become friends. I mean, we, we talk about the campaigns, we work on the campaigns, but we also talk about our families, our life, our frustrations. Uh, and I think really the culminating or the moment that that became really big was we had a volunteer meeting on January 6th of this year. And uh, we just threw the agenda aside and everyone just talked about how they were feeling and the connection and really getting to know each other and our emotions and opening up, I, I feel was a turning point in the community that we've been developing with Team Tampa. What do you think about it, Sarah? Uh, I agree. That was a really um, amazing meeting. I think we all had a little cry and kind of hair tugging there. But um, I, I want to say from my perspective, um, you know, I kind of shopped around a couple of different organizations trying to figure out who I wanted to devote my very little amount of time I have um, in terms of volunteering with. I wanted somewhere that was going to make a difference and somewhere that was going to um, try and be proactive and positive in our approach to, to the climate crisis. I think sometimes it can be a little doom and gloom. Um, and I, I just think Brooke and Michelle, um, who've been on our meetings, just set such a, a beautiful tone for our meetings. They're very um, accepting, tolerant, um, and positive. And it's, it's, a, it's a really fun meeting to go to. I always can't wait to see who's going to be on and who I get to catch up with and say hi to. Um, and I, I think that speaks volumes to you guys being able to, um, you know, set that tone from the beginning and um, create this very supportive team environment where everyone feels welcome. Nobody's questions or ideas are stupid. Although sometimes mine are. <laughs> um, you never make me feel stupid. Um, and um, we just try and lift each other up in this really, you know, this work that can be really hard and make you feel a little downtrodden sometimes. Um, so um, for me, that's been um, a really important part of working as a team in Tampa. And it's a major understatement when Sarah says the little bit of time she has. She's had three kids at home this entire year and she's headed other campaigns. I mean, just, it's amazing what you're able to do, Sarah. You're, I admire you. Ask a mom, ask a busy mom if you want somebody to get something done. <laughs> It's been a really hard year and a half, and I think we could all use a little bit more community. So I'm just so happy that uh, folks in Tampa uh, volunteering with us are, are able to, to feel a bit of that. And um, I'm glad that we are building these communities of volunteer teams all across the country. Yeah. Thank you so much, Brooke and Sarah, for your leadership and the Food and Water Volunteer Network. So um, we're going to go ahead and uh, talk about what's next for the Volunteer Network and then wrap up by talking about how you all can plug in. So the Volunteer Network is growing a ton right now. We are always adding more opportunities for folks to get involved and volunteer with us to safeguard healthy food, clean water, and a livable climate. So over the next year, we're going to be adding more volunteer teams to the network. Um, one of those teams in particular that I'm really excited about is our National Leadership Committee. So the leadership committee is made up of volunteer leaders like Sarah, who have taken on one of those leadership roles uh, in Food and Water Watch campaigns. Uh, in this committee in particular, leaders receive extra trainings and opportunities to get more deeply involved with us at Food and Water Watch. Um, in this committee, volunteers also get to hear from fellow volunteers across the country and learn how they've been able to organize successful campaigns in their communities, because we know we can learn best from each other. So as you've heard, there are tons of ways to get involved in the volunteer network. So um, check out the chat box now. We're sharing a link there so you can sign up and get more information about getting involved with the volunteer network. Once you sign up, if there is a Food and Water Watch organizer in your area, we can make sure you're plugged in with them. Uh, but remember, you can get involved from anywhere across the country in our calling and texting teams, asking fellow Food and Water Watch supporters to take action on our critical campaigns. 
And if lobbying is your thing, let us know that you want to join the climate liaison team to start lobbying your member of Congress. So check out that link in the chat box, sign up for more information about getting involved with the volunteer network uh, and let us know how you wanna volunteer with us. So thank you all for joining us in this session uh, and especially thank you all to our amazing volunteers. I hope you all enjoy the rest of the benefit.